Hello and welcome to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. Happy Monday. If you're listening on a Monday on the radio, you could be listening to the podcast, I guess, on a Monday or a Tuesday or even a Wednesday, I suppose. It gets confusing with all the opportunities and the options people have for listening to the show, but it's a good one today. So no matter how you're listening, you definitely want to make sure that you share this with your friends so they can learn more about Honor Flight Top of Virginia. We're talking with their founder and president, Diane Klopp, today. Joining her is one of her board members, Bill North, who is an old, very dear friend of mine. Bill has done the show several times. I had forgotten about one of the shows, and he was reminding me pre-recording about a particular show. Thank you both for taking some time today to come and educate me on Honor Flight. Thank you for having us. Diana, I want to start with you for a history and some background. Explain to me what Honor Flight is, how it came to be. Get me familiar with your organization. Honor Flight Network is a nationwide nonprofit organization, and the mission is simply to honor our nation's most senior veterans, those who served in World War II, Korea, Vietnam, with a day trip to Washington, D.C., so that they can see their memorials. The project really started back in 2004, when the World War II memorial was finally being built. 60 years after the end of World War II. There was a gentleman that worked at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio. His name was Earl Morse. He was a physician's assistant in the Air Force, and his patients were all World War II veterans. And so they were so excited that the World War II Memorial was finally being built in their honor, and that was just a big topic of conversation between Earl and his patients. And as time went by, Earl kept talking to them, hey, have you been to see your memorial? And for whatever reason, they were not able to get there. They couldn't afford to drive halfway across the country. They couldn't afford to fly themselves. Family couldn't get off work, whatever the reason. And so Earl happened to be a private pilot and he went up to his favorite World War II veteran and said, hey, can I fly you to DC so that you can see your memorial? And the veteran just broke down in tears. And so Earl took him, flew him to D.C. That was in December of 2004. They had the most amazing time. And so Earl went back to his buddies at the Aero Club at Wright-Patterson, and he said, this is what I want to do. I want to fly veterans to D.C. so that they can see their memorials. And so in May of 2005, six planes flew a total of 12 veterans, and that was the first official honor flight trip. And about that same time, there was another gentleman by the name of Jeff Miller in North Carolina who had the same idea, but he wasn't a pilot. So he chartered an entire plane and he flew veterans to DC. And so through the news covering these stories, they heard about each other. They joined forces and they formed the Honor Flight Network. And that network is across the country. It's not even just in those two states or in Virginia now. It's across the country. We now have 126, we call them hubs, 126 hubs in 44 different states. And in fact, just yesterday, they did the first trip from Puerto Rico. Wow. And you kind of are in a nice position because being in Virginia, (laughs) you can drive, you can charter a bus more so than an airplane. (laughs) I'm so grateful. We don't have to deal with planes and airports. Yes. But since the program started, we have flown over 270,000 veterans to D.C. to give them that day of honor so that they can visit their memorials. And I would imagine that it is such a special experience. Bill, you were one of the recipients. You were able to take this trip through Honor Flight to go to the memorial. And I have to assume that it was probably even more bittersweet for you doing it with a group of other veterans than if you had just decided yourself to get in the car and take a drive that day. Absolutely, Janet. It was, and it was because Diane came to our Rotary Club of Frederick County and did a presentation. I didn't know anything about Honor Flight. And after that presentation, I go, wow, they're actually doing this and helping veterans to go. And this is a simple brochure to help you sign up on the website and get a seat on the bus. And so I did that for the trip we did last year in June. All the veterans are always accompanied by a guardian. And I had the opportunity to ask my son, Kevin North, who is a veteran from the 90s. He served in the United States Army as well. So he was my guardian. 
And so for the fact that father and son had a chance to go, it was so impactful. I can't tell you. And many times that I've spoken to groups with Diane on behalf, and very often I get very emotional because it's just, it's so impactful. I served from 1970 to 73 during the Vietnam era, although I never did go we call across the pond into Southeast Asia or Vietnam, but I served in the United States and served during that period. Although at one point I did have in 1972, I did have orders for Vietnam and a number of us in our unit did. And about six days before I was saying goodbye to my wife and my daughter at the time and had all the shots and all the things prepared for. And six days before the orders got canceled. So I never went before I got out in August of 73. Diane, you mentioned when you were explaining it to me initially that it is for the more senior of veterans, which I think makes this even more special because the likelihood that they maybe have the ability to get there on their own is less available to them than unless they have some sort of opportunity like this. You know, I grew up in Northern Virginia and I never, ever went to D.C. It's just something that you don't do. You don't want to deal with the traffic. (laughs) You don't want to deal with where to park. I tried to drive up there once and I got a lovely ticket mailed to me because of an HOV violation that I didn't even know I was on the road. That's one of the the nice things about going with an honor flight trip is we have some special access. Do drive right up to the memorials so that the veterans don't have to walk. They don't have to deal with parking. We drive right up to the World War II Memorial. But if veterans have issues with mobility, you do not want that to stop them from participating at all. We have many, many, many wheelchairs. We take people to push the wheelchairs. If they are wheelchair bound and can't even get out of the wheelchair, then we will take a wheelchair lift bus. We want any veteran that wants to participate to be able to participate. And there is no charge to the veteran. This is an absolutely free trip for them to be able to have this experience. It is absolutely free. It does not cost them anything. We provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We give them all an honor flight polo shirt to wear. That's their uniform for the day. We have a professional photographer that donates his time and takes hundreds and hundreds of pictures. And after every trip, we make every veteran a photo book that we give to them so that they have those memories and can share those with their family. So absolutely no expense. We really just want to thank them for their service and let them know that we have not forgotten what they did for us so many years ago. I can't even begin to imagine how many veterans maybe don't even know that this exists. Much like what Bill was saying, until you came and spoke at Rotary, he didn't even know that that was something that was out there. I'm so glad that you reached out to me, that you and Bill both reached out to me to be able to do this show because it's a very important thing. It's a very important mission that you are accomplishing here. That's one of our biggest hurdles, I think, is that people have not heard about us. I actually got started doing this because I had heard about a flight coming into Dulles, and they wanted people to come and greet the veterans as they got off the plane. At the time, my children were very young. They were little Cub Scouts, and so I thought it was important to teach them patriotism and respect for veterans, and so I loaded them in my minivan, and I took them up to Dulles, and we stood there and shook the little American flags and waved and cheered as the veterans got off the plane. My oldest is 22 now, so that was probably 12 years ago, maybe. And from that moment, I was hooked. And so for many years, I went and I greeted planes that came into Dulles and I volunteered for the groups coming into Dulles. One day I was standing there and it just hit me. This is great that we are doing this for the veterans flying in from Texas and California and Chicago and everywhere else. Why aren't we doing this for the veterans here in the Valley? They deserve that day of honor just as much as the veterans from across the country. And I think like Bill said, it's so much more than just going physically to the memorials. It's the experience of going on the trip with the other veterans. And so that's why we turned around and we formed Honor Flight Top of Virginia so that we could honor the veterans here in this area. Like you said at the beginning, we don't take a plane, but otherwise it's the exact same honor flight experience. 
that the veterans flying in from across the country get. Let's take a break. When we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about the logistics of that experience, because while it is free for the veteran, it's not free for you. Somebody has to pay for that bus and the breakfast and the lunch and the polos and that sort of thing. So I want to talk about the flip side of that and how we as a community can help support you through donations and sponsorships. Can we talk about that in the next segment? Yes, please. Awesome. We're going to do all of that when we come back. We are on the screen today recording with Diane Klopp. She is founder and president of Honor Flight, Top of Virginia. Joining her is Bill North. He is one of their board members. We're going to come back and talk more about their program in just a few minutes. Hi, I'm Jennifer San Pietro, a graduating senior at Mountain Vista Governor School, and we're partnering with our local environmental nonprofit, Sustainability Matters, to help you help yourself while helping the planet. Here's a sustainability tip for the day. Reduce the use of outdoor lights. Besides being a waste of electricity when you are not outside, outdoor lights can be super harmful to all sorts of living creatures. Lights affect the activity of bats, moths, and other insects, disrupt bird flight paths and hunting routines, and can even change amphibian mating behavior. It might not be feasible to get rid of outdoor lights entirely, but using a motion sensor, turning off the lights when you are not outside, or even using lights angled towards the ground can help you help out your friendly neighborhood nighttime creatures. Thank you for listening. This has been an ecologically exciting message from Mountain Vista Governor School and Sustainability Matters, reminding you that together we can keep the river clean and the valley green. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. We are on the screen today talking about Honor Flight, top of Virginia. Diane Klopp is here with us, or not here with us. She's on a Zoom screen, not in the kitchen with me. I know everybody keeps asking me, how many people can you fit in your kitchen? This is Zoom. <laughs> this is not in-person recording today. But Diane is the founder and president of Honor Flight, top of Virginia. Bill North is with her as well. He is one of their board members. Diane, we talked in the first segment a little bit about the history and how it got started. Bill talked a little bit about his experience and being able to have that experience with his son, which I think is phenomenal. What does a typical trip look like? Can you walk me through what a typical mission looks like? Sure. So the veterans check in early in the morning, depending on the location, because we do different trips from different locations. But depending on the location, probably around seven o'clock, 730 in the morning, give every veteran an honor flight polo shirt to wear. That is their uniform for the day. And then we have breakfast. We have a photographer that takes their picture. And then we load up the buses and we head downtown. Our typical itinerary is we go to the World War II Memorial, go to the Korean War Memorial, go to the Vietnam Wall. Lunch is normally at the Air Force Memorial. We go by the Marine Corps Memorial, which some people know as Iwo Jima. And then my absolute favorite stop of the day is the changing of the guard at Arlington National Cemetery, where we participate in a wreath laying ceremony. And we do have special access, one of the few groups that's allowed to drive the tour bus right up to the Tomb of the Unknowns, so the veterans don't have to walk. If you've ever been to Arlington, you know, it's mostly an uphill walk to get to the Tomb of the Unknowns. Don't have to ride the little trolley. Don't have to deal with any of that. We drive right up to the Tomb of the Unknowns. And then we have a special chained off front row viewing area for our veterans so that they can watch the changing of the guard. And then when we come back in the evening, we have a big welcome home celebration for them. We have dinner, catered dinner. Their spouse is invited to join them for dinner and a couple other surprises that I won't go into, but we want to give them a big welcome home. It's a unique experience in and of itself to be able to go and do something like this, but you've made it even more unique by having it set up this way so that it's something that even if they did go on their own, it wouldn't be the same thing. And especially for the Vietnam veterans, those are the guys who were treated so horribly when they came home and they have a lot of emotional scars still to this day. And a lot of them have told us that on their own, they've never been able to go to the Vietnam Wall. But when they're on the bus with 50 other guys that have been through what they've been through, then they're finally able to go with their brothers and get that closure. 
And the memorials aren't necessarily closed to the public when you're doing these trips. It's got to be the coolest thing for somebody who maybe is there, even if there's like a class school field trip that's there. And then to see these veterans coming for the first time and seeing that and getting to relive that history with them in real life for the people that just happened to be at those particular memorials that day. That's got to be outstanding. And that makes a huge impact on the veterans when just random strangers who have going to be in D.C., just stop and shake their hand and thank them for their service. It makes a big impact. You've got three trips that are coming up over the next several weeks. Tell me about those. We do. We're unique in that we do different trips for different locations because we want to try to reach as many veterans as possible. So we do one trip from Loudoun County, and that's coming up on Saturday, April 29th. Then we're doing a trip from Winchester. That'll be on Saturday, June 3rd. And then in the fall, we'll do a trip from Harrisonburg. And that'll be Saturday, September 23rd. So if I am a Winchester resident and can't make the Winchester date, can I do the Loudoun date or the Harrisonburg date? We don't care where the veteran lives. (laughs) If they can get to us, we will gladly honor them. We are the closest hub in this entire region. The next closest hub to us is down in Bedford in Southwest Virginia or over on the Eastern shore in the Virginia beach area. So any veteran that can get to one of our departure points, we will gladly take them. We don't care where they live. They live in Martinsburg, come on over. We've had veterans from Pennsylvania. We had a couple veterans that they have family that lives in this area and they go from this area so that they can go with their brother or whoever. And we will gladly take them. We don't care if they serve, they serve, they deserve to be honored. Bill mentioned that he was able to do this trip. You allow a guardian to go. So he took his son, even if a veteran has chosen their one particular guardian, that doesn't mean the rest of the family can't get in their own car and follow you down and be there to experience it too, right? They're just not part of this particular experience. They can meet us at a memorial, sure. We could talk a little bit more about the guardian and how that works. Sure. A veteran is enabled to take a family member with them as their guardian if they choose. And a guardian is just their buddy for the day. Somebody that will make sure they're back to the bus on time, if they need a water, jump up and grab on the water, soda, whatever they need. If they're in a wheelchair, the guardian will push the wheelchair just whatever they need to treat them like the hero that they are for the day. And so our restrictions on guardians are they have to be between the ages of 18 and 65 and healthy enough to push a wheelchair all day. And it cannot be the veteran's spouse. Some veterans will choose to take their child or their grandchild if they're old enough. And we've often heard that The child will contact us after the trip and say, thank you so much for allowing me to do this with my dad because he's never talked about his service. But that day, I learned more about what my dad did than at any other time. And so it's really a blessing for them to get to experience it with them. But I don't want it to sound like they need to provide a guardian. We have a huge waiting list of volunteers ready to serve as guardians. And we also have a fantastic relationship for our Harrisonburg trip. We have a fantastic relationship with the JMU ROTC program. And so the ROTC cadets go with us as guardians on the Harrisonburg trip. That is fantastic. Bill, I bet your son had his hands full just making sure you didn't wander off somewhere. (laughs) That's very true. Uh, But he's been on several trips now. And one of the things you're talking about from other states He lives in Pennsylvania and he's very much involved with the VFW and he knew that one of the veterans there would like to have gone, but didn't know how he's get there. And my son said, you jump in my car at 430 in the morning and I will bring you and they had to go into the Harrisonburg trip. So it was a long drive down and it turned out this gentleman's son went with him. It was an outstanding experience for somebody who never thought he was ever going to be able to go to the memorials and had the same experience we all of us shared. So. And that's the other cool part about this, Diane, is that initially the experience is for that veteran. But when they're taking someone like a family member, like the story that you just told and like what Bill was saying, it becomes an experience for that family member as much as it is for the veteran themselves. It really does. It's special. It's special for them to be able to share that experience. 
as people are listening to us talk about this today, what can we do to help? How can we donate? Do you need sponsors? Can we volunteer? Tell us what we can do. Well, we still have some seats available for the upcoming trips. So if anyone would like to go, our criteria to participate as a veteran is we have to have served any time prior to 1976. We don't care where they served. We don't care if they served during peacetime. We don't care if they never left American soil. They serve and they deserve this day of honor. A lot of times there's distinction between did they serve in country? Did they serve where? We don't care. There were a member of the military and they were honorably discharged, then they qualify to go on the truck. And you're right, because the entire military doesn't operate if you start sectioning it out into who went where and who did what types of military service. It takes all of them together to serve our country and keep this country safe. Yes, absolutely. And so any veteran who would like to go on one of our upcoming trips, they can go to our website, which is Honor Flight dash tov which is short for top of virginia honorflight dash tov.org and when they go on there they can find an online veteran application and it's just a short google form they fill out it comes straight to me and i'll reserve their seat there's also an online guardian application on there if they want to sign up their child or their grandchild to, or friend whatever to go with them we have some guys that go with their buddies. I have one guy from this Harrisonburg trip. He's got all his buddies lined up going with them. And so I've made a note of it so they can all go on the same bus together. They're going to have a big old party, I can tell. <laughs> Troublemakers I'm going to have to keep an eye on already. Or they can give me a call. My number is 540-692-9197. And I can just take their information over the phone if they're not computer savvy and get them signed up that way. So that's the big thing right now is to get veterans signed up for the trip. We do have a waiting list of guardians, but if somebody would like to volunteer to be a guardian, they can go ahead and sign up. And when we have an opening, we'll contact them. The other way that I'd really like to get people involved is when we come back, we have a big welcome home celebration for the veterans. We tell them that they're going to get this catered dinner and their spouse is invited to join them for dinner. Uh, and I don't want to give away all my secrets, but the one thing <laughs> is that we try to give them the welcome home that they never got 50 years ago. And part of that is having the public come out and line the streets and clap and cheer when they return home, get off the buses. So we have hundreds of handheld flags to distribute. It only takes maybe 15, 30 minutes of your time. But when the buses pull in and the veterans see those people standing out there cheering for them, that's when the tears really start to flow because these guys served over 50 years ago. They think nobody remembers the sacrifices that they made. And they certainly weren't treated kindly when they returned home. We know we can't change that, but we can let them know that we are so grateful for their service and everything that they did for us. And so that's just a little part of how we can thank them. And do you have information about that on your website so somebody can go and mark their calendar, maybe gather up a group of friends and family or Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts can go ahead and plan around those dates? I don't have it out there, but that's a great idea. I should do that. What I normally do is just post it on our Facebook page like a week before just to get people to come out there, but definitely need to do a better job of spreading the word about that. It happens to all of us. All of us need to do a better <laughs> job of spreading the word about so many different things. <laughs> and then can I donate? Can I sponsor a veteran? Do you need help paying for these tour buses? How can I help you monetarily? We would love any donations that we can get. You can mail us a check. Our address is on our website. We have PayPal on our website. It costs us approximately $250 per veteran for the trip. Right now, with rising prices, we're averaging about $12,000 per trip is what it costs us. So any donations that we can get would be greatly appreciated. You mentioned the Facebook page. How can people find you on Facebook? What do they search for? Honor Flight, Top of Virginia. 
thank you both for taking some time today to tell me about this. I think this is a phenomenal program. I can't believe like you, Bill, that I didn't know anything about it. And that's probably because I haven't been to a Rotary meeting in 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> the kudos are to Diane for not only what she did for her own boys and giving them the honor to understand about patriotism and supporting others, but then deciding in 2016 to start this hub herself and getting all the requirements out of the way and just launching it. And Diane, you might mention how many veterans you've been able to service at this point and how many were World War II veterans. Unfortunately, we're losing so many of them every day. So far, we've done 15 trips. We've served over 640 veterans, and I'm really proud that over 67 of them have been World War II veterans. Wow, that is phenomenal. So yeah. if people could just please spread the word. There's absolutely no cost. I can't reiterate that enough. People always think it's some kind of scam because nothing's free anymore. It truly is free. We are legitimate. 501c3 nonprofit organization. We will not take their money. We won't scam them. We just want to honor them and thank them for their service. Yeah. Well, you've come to the right place because I will tell everybody that I know <laughs> over and over <laughs> and you. over again. So good job reaching out to me, Bill North. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. It was my pleasure to do so. And it's really the voice. And by the way, we hand out free Kleenex all the time. So it's not a problem. <laughs> and all the different services that are part of it, not just Army, Air Force, Marine Corps, Navy, and Coast Guard. All are invited to go. And it's, it's nice to see camaraderie with all of those veterans for ver different time periods. So it's a trip in itself. Oh, yeah. I bet that's interesting too, Diane, because I could imagine where there might be some cases where Army and Navy have to be on different buses. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen those football games. It might get a little crazy. <laughs> Thank you both. I will put links and the phone numbers and everything that you have mentioned today on the show notes page so people can find that at the Valley Today Podcast.com. But thank you for your time and thank you so much for the good work that you're doing. This is really impressive. Thank you. I will be back tomorrow. I will have a brand new episode of The Valley today ready to go for you a few minutes after noon. It is Tourism Tuesday, and we are talking horses tomorrow. It's all I'm going to tell you. Meet me back here for it a few minutes after noon.